the Birth Bootcamp podcast. Um, I am Cheryl Ameling, the certification coordinator. And I'm Megan Busk, the head of marketing. And today we have Christine Ortiz with us. Um, and we're we're doing a whole summer on birth stories. So today we get to listen to um, Christine's birth story. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be really fun. Um, okay, so let's just jump in. Tell us like a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how many kids you have. You're, you're um, a birth boot camp instructor. And um, so give us a little information about you. Yeah, so I live in Maryland. Um, I have two little kids and I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm a birth boot camp instructor. And um, here we spend, my family, we like to spend a lot of time outside and um, we're close. I don't know, what do you want to know? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that sounds perfect. That that's sounds great. great. That's good. Um, all right. Tell us about your first birth. You said you have two kids. Yeah, I do. So when I got pregnant with my first child, somebody recommended I take a childbirth class. And that was just the very beginning of me kind of learning about the whole world of birth and all the things I didn't know that I didn't know. And that was really what started it. So um, my husband and I took a really great class that we loved. Um, we didn't know about birth boot camp. It wasn't in my area. Um, but we loved our class and, um, I was just so surprised that I didn't know anything mm -hmm. <laughs> about childbirth at all or pregnancy or anything. I didn't know anything. And I, I was so shocked by, um, what I didn't know. And then I kind of got nerdy about it because I really love to learn. So, um, everything I was learning was just so fascinating to me. And of course it had to do with, you know, what was going on with my body and my future family. And, um, it's so important to me. So that was kind of the beginning. Um, we loved our class. We felt so confident, like, you know, oh, I know my body can do this and I understand all my options and I know how to stay, um, low risk. And we just loved it. Like we ate it up. We're really nerdy about it. <laughs> I love that. That's great. <laughs> uh, um, aside from your classes or anything else that you did to prepare? Um, yeah, I mean, in the class, you know, they taught us like relaxation exercises. Um, we did those a lot. Um, exercise and nutrition, focusing on staying low risk, um, staying calm, just kind of preparing also like mentally. Um, and emotionally, I was able to stop working a few months before I was going to give birth, um, which was just a huge blessing. So I could just kind of really lean into this new period of life for me and start thinking about what it meant to become a mother and how I felt about it. And all of that was so important. I didn't realize how important it would be, but it was just a huge blessing to have that time to prepare in that way. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, I totally agree. Being able to have that that time set apart to just like realize what's about to take place and yeah. prepare yourself. That's fabulous. Yeah, I love that. Um, so where did you where were you planning to deliver? So we um we had a hospital birth. Um okay. and I at the time I would have loved to have, you know, a home birth or a birth center birth. Um we didn't really have a birth center in our area and um just that was the best option uh, based on the insurance that we had. And we felt pretty good because we felt really prepared. We knew that we'd be able to navigate the hospital situation, wanting to have um, a completely kind of hands-off, unmedicated hospital birth. Um, we probably got luckier, <laughs> luckier than we realized. You know, we thought we could control more, but I think luck had a lot to do with you know, the awesome experience that we had um, in that situation. But yeah, it, and the hospital was about a 45 minute drive away from the house too. So it okay. wasn't either. Yeah. 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 All right. Tell us about like the morning of your birth. Like how far along were you? How did it all begin? Yeah. So, um, so I went 42 weeks wow. um, in my pregnancy. So I went all the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the way. So we were just pretty desperate, um, wanted to avoid an induction. I just wanted to have 
the like the total natural experience from start to finish. And so um, every time we had an appointment, you know, I would always ask, like, as long as baby's OK, I want to wait a little bit longer. You know, as long as there's enough fluid, is there enough fluid? OK, then I can wait a little bit longer. So I felt like as long as we had the information, as long as I was told baby's OK right now, we'll wait a little bit longer. But we got all the way up to 42 weeks and realized, OK, we can't. It's going to be hard to go past this and have the support of um my doctor <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. really like wanted to keep that good relationship and so um fortunately I went into labor like the night before like I was going to have the induction um and it was perfect um you know just in the middle of the night labor started at 3 a.m it's kind of like you know calm and I couldn't sleep anymore because I was so excited, you know, because I'd spent days just desperate to to go into labor because I didn't want my induction. So um, I woke up right away at 3 a.m. and started walking <laughs> up and down the yes. stairs. I knew I shouldn't do it. You know, I'd been told, no, you should rest. I knew I shouldn't, but I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I was so excited. Um, and it was a long labor, too. So I ended up being really tired for not for not sleeping. Um when I could sleep in the very beginning. Um, But yeah, it was like, it was long and slow, my labor was. Um, And I had a doula. She was really far away, though. She was a two, two and a half hour drive away. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, Yeah, but I had a good relationship with her. And we thought, okay, it'll be fine. (laughs) (laughs) I guess it was, right? (laughs) You had a long labor. (laughs) Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. We had plenty of time. Um, so you, we just spent a lot of time, like just trying to enjoy it. We went for walks. Um, I had a lovely little moment going for a walk with my husband. It was like a movie moment. Um, we were walking and, um, someone saw us walking and I had to stop and have a contraction. And this person's like, is today the day? Uh-huh. And I said, yes, I think it is. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love that. just a little moment where I felt so special. Like, yes, this is my time. Aww. I'm going to have my baby today. And someone noticed me. <laughs> oh, that's that. awesome. I'll never forget that one. That one was really cute. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was just early labor for a really long time. And then um, I remember we got, um, when things started to feel like it was a little more difficult to just like sit by myself and have a contraction and handle it myself, that's when we kind of called the doula when I realized, oh, I actually need another person to help me through this sometimes. And she had a really long drive. So it was in the afternoon that we called her. She drove the two and a half hours. She got to my house and I burst into tears because there's so many emotions, you know, there's this big relief, you know, when someone shows up that you've been waiting for. Um, But I still had hours after that of very manageable contractions. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She even walked around my house with me. She followed us around the house with a chair. She like a (laughs) folded chair so that I could sit in it if I wanted to. And I had a contraction while we were walking. Um, She was really great. She was so sweet. Um, Yeah. And I remember we got salads for dinner and the moment that I went into active labor was in the middle of my salad because I remember (laughs) sitting in my chair, eating my salad. And all of a sudden I just couldn't anymore. I just couldn't. I'm like, I just can't eat this, this I'm in labor. I can only think about this contraction and the next one and the next one. And it was like, that shift happened into active labor right at that moment. And I'd been taught to look for kind of the emotional signs and like the way that I'm feeling and to judge labor that way, which was really helpful um, just based on the way my contractions were because they were not really normal contractions. They didn't follow normal patterns. So it was really great that I learned the emotional signs of labor because that was what tipped me off, you know, where I am and how I'm progressing. And so we moved to a dark room, it was quiet, it was my bedroom, you know, I felt safe. Um, And that was like a total different phase of labor, like moving to that room. All of a sudden it was quiet and we weren't laughing anymore and we weren't joking. And I was just in the zone, like I was within myself. (laughs) Um, I remember like, just having my husband and my doula like stroking my legs and it was really lovely and calm 
and the contractions were, you know, hard, but um, it didn't feel painful. I tell people I did not have pain in my labor because I, I just didn't, it didn't feel like pain to me. It's like mm -hmm. the muscles are working really hard, but it's, it's not painful. Um, and um, I actually ended up spent a couple hours in the bedroom and um, I ended up being really shocked by transition. Are you ready for me to talk about this? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> <That's absolutely. rad. laughs> I remember I was really shocked because I was just laying in bed resting. So I was very tired. It had been a whole day and I was exhausted. So I went to sleep and I woke up in transition. Um, and I just had like these wild surges of <laughs> contractions that really shocked me. Like they were just wild. Like I went from contractions that I felt like I could anticipate and manage to something that was just like rushing at me. And I was so shocked. And I remember shouting, why am I pushing? Why am I pushing? Because they just felt expulsive. And I, I wasn't expecting it, but um, I was also like self-conscious, you know, and feeling really um, like I wanted other people to reassure me and tell me what to do. So I didn't say, I think I'm in transition. Mm -hmm. I just kind of panicked. Mm -hmm. And so my doula thought, okay, we need to calm this chick down. Let's get her in the bathtub. <laughs> so we went in the bathtub and that ended up not working out so well because I'm in a cold, hard tub. I mean, the water is warm, but I'm in a hard tub and then I start shaking because that's, you know, something that can happen sometimes in transition. And <laughs> so I'm shaking in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> thinking this is the, maybe not what I need and that's when I started to say how do we know when we need to go to the hospital how do we know how do we know mm -hmm. I couldn't even say I want to go to the hospital it was how do we know because I kept thinking what if I'm wrong what if I'm just freaking out and it gets a lot harder after this you know I don't mm -hmm. want to look foolish but I should have trusted myself because I really did know I, I really did know exactly what was happening yeah um so that's when we got ready. We got in the car and started the 45 minute drive to the hospital. I'm still kind of in transition. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got pillows surrounding me in the car and I'm like bracing my feet against the floor of the car because I don't want to push a baby out in the car. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That had to have been and a this long whole drive. Time, my, uh, <laughs> contractions are 10 minutes apart, you know. You were taught kind of to, to count the time between the contractions, but mine were always 10 minutes apart. And that's pretty far apart. That's so really based far just apart, on yeah. that, you wouldn't think that I would have been so far along on labor, but I was. Um, and they had little mini ones in between. They were tricking me. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So you so you got to the hospital. Yeah. And and then what happened? Yeah. So at the hospital, I remember going up the elevator. And this poor older man in the elevator is like, is she okay? <laughs> you know, because I'm moaning in the elevator. Like, yeah, she's just in labor. <laughs> and we get up um, and we check in. And I remember hearing my husband and my doula um, telling them, you know, her contractions are 10 minutes apart and her water hasn't broke. And so they say, okay go sit down over there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Cause they're like this, this is not for serious. Right. First time <laughs> so I mom. Sit me down in the chair and I, I sit down and pretty much as soon as I sit down, I just start to feel a whopper of a contraction come on and I stand up and I'm hanging on my husband's neck and I like my back just caves in and I let out this low <laughs> primal mm -hmm. moan right mm -hmm. like it's so loud and I just don't have any control over it it's just like this huge contraction and the second that the nurses hear that they rush me over to triage it was like they knew I I don't know it was like they knew yeah. they came with they're like okay all right let's get you in um and my my doula was so funny she came over and she whispered in my ear she goes good job like <laughs> putting on a show or something, but it was That's anyway funny. that I just had no control over it. So we got in triage and I remember laying there and the doctor, you know, she checks me for a second and she goes, Honey, you're complete. Wow. And I'm like, I wasn't expecting that word. I'm like, complete. You mean you mean like 
fully dilated like, <laughs> like 10 centimeters she goes yes you're 10 centimeters and I I was laughing I had this little celebration and she was I'm laughing you know I'm so happy you know because I thought I thought I think I've done as much as I can possibly do it can't get harder than this but what if it does and this little nagging fear what if it gets harder than this and I can't handle it and then to find out I actually just went all the way in my house but like on my own we did it I was so proud of myself um and just the relief of knowing I wouldn't have to labor long in the hospital Cause I didn't, that's not what I had, had wanted. Um, I was just so joyous at that uh-huh. moment. Yeah. And then for the first time of my life, you know, being pushed in a bed down a hospital hallway, you know, another movie, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, into the labor and delivery room. And then the most awesome thing was that I had like over an hour of just rest like Mm -hmm. very mild contractions. I was so comfortable and I was sleeping. So I'd have a contraction and then I'd fall asleep for 10 minutes, you know? And I had just this amazing rest and I was lying in the bed and um, the nurses, they even said, they said, you don't even need an IV. It's too late for that. And that was something I wanted to avoid. And so that was kind of like one thing I didn't have to think about. You know, I had my birth plan. They put my birth plan up on the door. They put it up on the wall. They were very respectful of that. Mm-hmm. One of the nurses asked um, on a scale from one to 10, she showed me the happy face and the frowny face. How much mm-hmm. pain are you in? And I said, I have no pain. I remember I was, I was very drowsy because I'm very sleepy and I'm also very comfortable in like this weird way just the hormones and mm-hmm. just that awesome cocktail that I had during that hour um so I said kind of blissfully I have no pain <laughs> <laughs> she was like really shocked uh-huh. and I thought why are you shocked do I look like I'm in pain I mean I'm sleeping <laughs> mm-hmm. and so um it was really lovely so we had this we had this rest and um I got a honey stick at one point and I started sucking on this honey stick and I was going, "Mm, oh, I just was really into the honey stick. really loved it (laughs) because I hadn't had anything to eat since that half of salad that I couldn't finish when I started active labor. And one of the nurses was laughing. She thought it was so funny, you know, in a sweet way. She thought it was just really funny that I was moaning over this honey stick. Um, And then after a little while, I just started to feel pushy and I just kind of felt like I want to pull my legs up and just kind of push you know and I just felt it and um you know no one was pushing me for time everything was very relaxed and so I just said I I kind of feel like pushing (laughs) and it was very calm and so you know people kind of started to come in and and check and I remember the um the doctor coming in and she walked up to the, she walked up to the wall where my birth plane was. She pulled it off the wall, sat down in a chair and read it top to bottom before. And I watched her do it. That was my first um, interaction with her was I watched her pull my birth plan down. She sat down, she read it. And I thought, okay, this is going to be okay. She knows what, Yeah, you know, and then she sat there, she sat down and she took that moment to read it. Um, she probably had no idea how much that meant to me, but I saw that. And that's something I'll always remember. I felt so respected. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Not yeah. at all. I love that. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So how long did you, how long did you push? Um, I don't even remember. Okay. I don't remember. Um, it was less than an hour. It wasn't a super fast pushing, but it also wasn't, you know, a super long. It was pro- I don't know. Um, and I was still kind of just like really, um, I don't know, blissed out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wasn't enjoying it by any means, but I had really no awareness of time and my husband doesn't remember very well, but um, I was a super pusher. That is what the nurse told me because I was hearing my baby's heartbeat. I had um, an electronic fetal monitor. It was a really nice one. It, it kind of had an adhesive, so it was sticky. It stuck uh-huh. to my back. 
it left like a little rash afterwards, but um, it wasn't like as cumbersome as, you know, having a lot of strap around me. They didn't have to readjust it all the time, but because I could hear the fetal monitor, I could hear my baby's heartbeat. Um, I kept, it gave me a little bit of anxiety because I kept thinking oh. as long as it's there, it's fine. But when it's not there or if it changes, if they hear something they don't like, then I'm in trouble. And so something about that just made me feel like I have to get this baby out as fast as possible. That's just where my headspace was. Yeah. Even though everything had gone so smoothly up until that point, it's like, as soon as I heard that heartbeat and I knew they were listening for it, I thought this is where something could go wrong for the first, you know, for the first time. Yeah. And um, so I super pushed, which I knew I, I shouldn't do, but, um, and I did tear because of that. And I know, I, I know we tore because yeah. of that. <laughs> it was just another thing. Like I'd been taught, you know, I'd been taught, you know, that I can breathe and like slow and everything, but that's not where I was at first baby. I'm like, no, no, have to get it out as fast as possible. And I also had this idea that like pushing was maybe going to be the hardest work I'd ever done in my life. Like, because that's just kind of the things that I had seen, you know, or things that people had said, like, you have to push as hard as your body possibly can. I just had this idea that maybe it was going to be really hard work. Um, and after having a second child, I can say it doesn't have to be like that. You know, you're not on the exercise machine, you know, you're not pumping weights. Um, but yeah, the thing that surprised me about, about the pushing was that, you know, when I didn't know the gender of, of my baby either, but when my baby was, you know, coming out, I remember the head coming out and feeling that I remember feeling tearing, but it didn't hurt. I just kind of felt that it happened and it wasn't scary. It didn't upset me or anything. I was kind of expecting that it might happen. Um, but I kind of thought after the head came out, the rest of the body would just sploosh. Like it would just be like a blob. But I felt every inch of that body come out. And that was such a surprise for me. I remember just being surprised by the sensitivity that I had of that sensation of feeling every inch of her body come out. And that actually ended up being a really special thing for me. Um, almost kind of like a, like a seal, like this is my child. I felt her come out of me. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of a really cool moment. And then, um, and then she was placed on me right away, which was just really lovely. And I remember watching her naked body just come through the air, you know, cause someone was was giving her to me you know she's like it's like she's floating this naked child is floating in the air towards my face and then she's put on my body and oh I mean there's really no other moment that can top that moment or be any more special or remarkable than that right there is having your child's form naked body placed on you for the first time and greeting them especially when they've been a mystery, you know, I didn't know, am I having a son? Am I having a daughter? Who is this person? What is their name going to be? Yeah. And my, my husband told me you have a girl. And, and I said, don't say her name. Don't say her name. <laughs> and I think I just wanted to hold on to that mystery just a little bit longer. I don't know what it was. Like maybe it was just all too much, like just to greet her and have her name and to know who she is was just so much, such an emotional thing. It was it was really funny. Um, and then just tried to let her suckle and, you know, she's covered with a blanket and it was really, it was really lovely. Um, I was losing a lot of blood though. And I remember them telling me like, I'm starting to feel a little bit concerned about, you know, your blood loss, trying to get the placenta out. And so they offered Pitocin and I had been taught to ask about my options. And that was so helpful, um, at this time because, you know, I said, well, do I need it right now? Well, like how much, how much longer can we wait? Like how much more blood can we lose? I'm, you know, can I simulate my nipples and like, see if I can get my baby to suckle and, um, try those things. And the doctor said, yeah, we can do that for a certain amount of time. And, and then I said, like, you know, they offered, um, because they were offering Pitocin, you know, in an IV. And I said, well, how about the, you know, the syringe, you know, the thing they stick in your, 
in your leg? Is that something that we could do if it comes down to it? And you could just do that really fast. Um, that way we don't have to give me Pitocin preventatively to help the placenta come out. Let's see if I can get the placenta to come out on my own. And at the last minute, can you shoot me up with Pitocin if I need it? She said, yes, it was great. Um, and so because I knew that that could be an option, I was able to ask for it, but she probably wouldn't have ever offered it because mm -hmm. that's not the way they would normally do mm -hmm. things. Right. Um, it might not be the most convenient for them or even the way they think is best, but because I was able to ask specifically, and then she said yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then so I was able to birth the placenta just fine. Um, I think I stopped bleeding just in the nick of time, um, they told me. Um, so I was really thankful for that. Um, they even offered me a blood transfusion because they said that I had lost enough that they could offer it to me, but I could probably be okay if I didn't have one. Um, so that just was like telling me how much I had lost. I was very weak after that. Um, that was very surprising. The whole postpartum experience is just another, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. another story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, what an incredible experience. And I loved all your insights and um, yeah, just hearing you talk about it, just brought back all those feelings, you know, of having my own baby. So I loved that. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah, there a I, moment? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, sorry. no, no, no. Go. I was just say, was there a moment that you just felt like I did it <laughs> your, I did it moment. Yeah, definitely. After my daughter was born and everything calmed down, you know, they like, they check her Apgar and everything like that. After everyone kind of leaves and leaves us alone to rest. Um, I remember telling my husband something like, I can't wait to do it again. Or like, this was great. I just, <laughs> I just like saying really positive things about it. Cause I just felt so good about myself. Yeah. Um, and I, I had never known what kind of power I had inside my body before you know you as a woman you walk around and you have this organ you have this uterus and it's amazing and you have no idea the power that's in it until you have the opportunity if you have the opportunity to use it and I was just so grateful that I did and then I got to know you know the strength just the physical power that's in my body yeah. um and I think even for women who maybe aren't athletic or really don't know their own strength, they still have that potential for all of that power in their body to birth even a large baby. And I just think that's really amazing. Um, and I remember in that moment thinking, I want every woman to feel like this. Every woman should feel the way that I feel right now, because I'm never going to forget this moment. I'm going to keep it with me forever. And it's going to be a part of me and a part of, you know, my self-esteem and the way that I think about myself and the way I think about other women is going to change because of this experience that I had right now. And I really just wanted everybody to feel that. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to teach childbirth classes because I want to help other people feel the same thing because I know how powerful it can be. Yeah. I love that. I, after I had my first baby, I had that exact same thought every woman should have the opportunity to feel how I felt because mm -hmm. it was such an amazing experience. And, and I didn't, I wasn't even into birth. I thought it was gross and weird. And mm -hmm. until I had a baby and then I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most incredible thing. And I, like Megan said, I love all your insight. I love like I, the, my favorite part about listening to birth stories is, is the, the thoughts in your head, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, you know, when your water broke and when you went into labor, like those are all details, but like the fun part is the, this is how I felt in that moment. Or I remember when they said this, or I love the moment on the street when you felt seen and like, this is my day, you know, like mm -hmm. that's, that's the part of birth and birth stories that it, that's where the magic is. Yes. And so, yeah, this was so great. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I love, I love that. And I love that you now get to share your experience and, um, and the information that you were able to use with other families and, mm -hmm. and, you know, like, like we're changing our culture, we're changing birth, we're changing families and communities in the world, like one birth at a time. 
and, and you're such a powerful part of that. So I love this. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. It was really wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit about um, you as a birth bootcamp instructor and where we can find you website or anything like that? Yeah. So my website is Christine teaches birth.com. Um, and I'm not really big on social media. That's not something that I'm good at. I'm pretty basic. So I have a basic little website. <laughs> I've just got my email and I've got a phone number and that's kind of how I do things. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. That works. All right. Well, thank you so much again for spending this morning with us and sharing your story. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. I had a really good time. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, subscribe and tune in. We have more birth stories coming this summer. So. Bye.